It's me. I'm back. God help me. <laughs> right, here we go. So, some of you out there may remember a little something that happened back in 2020 that meant we all had to stay indoors a whole lot. Something involving a cough and bats? I think it was on the news. COVID. 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 Anyway, it should come as no surprise that being forced to stay inside, isolated and alone, unable to see friends or family, go to work, go anywhere. It's not necessarily the best thing for your mental health. At the time, we just sort of had to deal with it, accept this new reality and make the best of it, however we could. It's only now, looking back, that I realised just how surreal the whole thing was and how depressed and anxious I was actually feeling. People throw words like depression and anxiety around a lot, but if any of you out there have ever suffered from it, you know that 2020 was just a year that seemed absolutely hell-bent on exacerbating those issues at every possible turn. Like I'm sure many of you out there did, I had to turn to my hobbies and casual interests in order to pass the time and keep myself somewhat sane. And so, of course, I turned to games. I finally caved and subscribed to Xbox Game Pass, a decision I do not regret whatsoever, by the way, and decided to try out some games that I'd never usually have picked up in store. This turned out to be one of the best decisions I've ever made, and has shaped the way I approach games ever since. My opinions on certain genres have totally changed, and I find myself far more open to the quirky, casual indie experiences rather than action-packed AAA blockbusters these days. Immersing myself in worlds that I wouldn't have otherwise explored, and trying out experiences that I wasn't typically used to, led me to eventually stumble across a little indie game called East Shade. Now, I adore East Shade. I was a little uncertain at first. The graphics and the animation felt a little flat, the movement was a little clunky, and I wasn't sure how well the story was going to hold my attention, given that I was used to faster-paced, more action-packed narratives. But it wasn't long before I fell in love. <laughs> Perhaps part of it was because I was stuck inside, stressed out and drowning in all the negativity on the news, that I was so open to immersing myself in this world so quickly. But there's no denying that the developers of East Shade crafted something truly wonderful here. Look, the video title isn't a lie. This game was like a breath of fresh air for me during lockdown. Not only could I explore these stunning vistas with relative freedom, but I could do it stress-free without the fear of encountering any high-level enemies or annoying combat zones. Normally in other games this might have felt like a negative. Empty, lifeless maps are the scourge of modern open-world games, yes, but those games tend to be focused more on combat. East Shade's focus is... different. The best way I can describe it is, what if Skyrim had no combat? Yes, we're still comparing things to Skyrim all this time from now, I'm sorry. What if it had no enemies to fight, but retained the interesting world, the lovable NPC encounters, the quest lines and the side quests with multiple solutions, and all those quirky hidden surprises? Well you kind of get this game. So, what is East Shade actually all about? I won't go into too much detail, as narrative and discovery is a large part of the experience, but the initial premise is that you, a painter, arrive at a fantastical island, East Shade, looking to fulfil your deceased mother's last wishes, which, oddly enough, is to paint four specific landmarks, or landscapes, found across the island. It sounds simple enough, but you'll soon realise that in order to reach certain locations, you'll need to navigate a spiderweb of intersecting questlines and some light environmental puzzles first. Most characters you meet in East Shade have something to say, whether it's gossip, information, or a request for a painting or some other item. Here East Shade shows off its efficiency in its writing, as almost all dialogue has some relevance to other quests within the world, even if it's just a passing reference. Characters are well written and mostly well voice acted, and there are plenty of memorable, quirky encounters. I found almost all of them charming or intriguing in some way, shape or form. This is all essential, as talking with these characters and choosing your responses furthers your ability to explore the island and find those key landmarks. The world itself is masterfully crafted, and again shows the developers have a keen eye for efficiency. The island never feels so big that the task of exploring it seems insurmountable, but never so small that it seems like you've already seen everything. Yes, there's a lot of land where quest lines and characters are scarce, but journeying through these lands, which often have collectibles and striking environments to paint, and discovering those key locations is all part of the experience. The map design always ensures there's some point of interest just peeking over the horizon, waiting for you to go and explore it. Sometimes you'll find what you're looking for, sometimes you'll find something entirely different to what you expected. There's even some light progression elements where you can find, buy, or create equipment that helps you better navigate the world, often as part of a reward for diving a little deeper into the side content. Which of course makes traversing through areas you've already explored far less tedious. Do you remember those moments in old E3 demos where the playable character would just stop to observe and take in the landscape? 
There are literally dozens of moments like that in this game. This may sound melodramatic, and perhaps my lockdown brain was largely responsible for this, but there were genuinely moments where I'd stumble across a new area, the ambient sound would kick in, the music would swell, and I'd actually get shivers. I could be specific about which areas I'm talking about, but I don't want to spoil the experience for any of you out there wanting to give it a go for yourself, because, as I said before, that's kind of what this game's all about. And before you ask, no, you don't actually have to physically paint anything. I can't paint or draw or make anything really, to save my life. And each shade expects this of most its players, so it keeps it simple. Creating a painting in this game is as simple as taking a screenshot, which of course the game allows you to keep, view and sell later. The light inventory and crafting system in the game means you need to find resources to make painting materials, which keeps things interesting, as it incentivizes you to complete quests and search for resources, and means you have to choose your subjects carefully, meaning you really value each painting you create. You can't see me right now, but I'm moving my arms back and forth with every word, like some sort of weird robot. Exploring the world was a genuine pleasure. The sights I got to see and the people I got to meet were a welcome substitute to the mundane isolation I was experiencing at the time, and I never felt like I was ever under any pressure to go down a certain path or overcome a particular obstacle. It struck a chord with me at the time where games like Call of Duty Warzone and whatever Battlefield happened to be popular at the time were only adding further stress to my already exhausted brain. Like I've said before in my simulation games video. Those types of games constantly demand your best, and every split-second decision is punishable by sudden death, which, yes, can be fun in the right mindset, but here East Shade does away with all that and just lets you take things at your own pace, enjoy the view, and just chill out. Sure, action games are fun, but they aren't for everyone, and even for people like me who enjoy them, they're not always the right kind of distraction you might be looking for. At times, they can be a great way to relieve stress, but at others, the pressure to be competitive can just add to that stress. Down one, down one. Are you kidding me? No. So if you're feeling that pressure, I really encourage you to try out Eastshade, or at least broaden your gaming horizons and try out something a little different, something you might not normally approach. There are so many indie games out there that can offer these unique experiences, free from those AAA constraints where they need to compete with the highest grossing action blockbuster, and they can just take a few more risks and provide more nuanced slow <laughs> God, this sentence is a mess. Who wrote this crap? Oh wait. There are so many indie games out there that can offer these unique experiences, free from the AAA constraints where they need to compete with the highest grossing action blockbuster, where they can take a few more risks and provide more nuanced, slower gameplay. These games offer a different kind of entertainment, and a kind that I have been able to appreciate far more ever since I tried out Eastshade. I can't promise you'll have the same experience with Eastshade as I did. I was in a very particular headspace when I discovered the game, and so certain beats hit a little stronger than they might have in more normal times, quote-unquote. But I can promise that if you like fantasy worlds and enjoy diving deep into the side quests and dialogue trees of games like Skyrim, there's a good chance you'll click with this game. To say it's relaxing doesn't quite do it justice, but it truly allowed me to just stop, forget my troubles for a while, and get lost. That's not to say that the game is totally devoid of conflict. Some characters argue with each other, some argue with you, problems are presented and you have to help resolve them, but there's always something comforting in knowing that, providing you make the right choices, there's almost always a happy resolution. It may be easy to dismiss this game on the surface as dull and boring, but if you feel that way, I really encourage you to take some time and look just a little bit deeper. And if you're feeling stressed or anxious, I can't recommend this game enough. Its chilled out approach to dialogue driven quests and crafting and exploration was the perfect, albeit temporary, remedy for me. And by the time I finished the game, which I 100% completed by the way, that's not bragging, that's just saying I like the game, I was left with a feeling of warmth and comfort. The game doesn't overstay its welcome, and so much of it is optional. There are plenty of secrets and surprises waiting to be found, and will sometimes take the game in a direction you didn't expect. So if you want to put some extra time in, see what's peeking over that hill, or what's waiting down the river, or what's making that noise in the forest, you will be rewarded for it. Most games offer a form of escapism, a distraction from the harsh realities of the world, be they power fantasies or down-to-earth simulators, but this one just nails it. It doesn't burden you with complicated mechanics or tense boss encounters or seemingly unsolvable puzzles. It just gives you the world and says, here, enjoy, and sometimes that's all you may actually need. Eh, <laughs> uh, right. I guess that was that. Thanks everyone so much for watching this video. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, um, even though that Halo ODST video was released not long ago on this channel. It was actually released years back on uh, one of my old channels, um, and 
because obviously Cam edited it and put a lot of work into it, we just thought, hey, why not throw it out on here and try and make some more content? And amazingly, you guys have come through and that video has started to blow up now, along with a few others getting a bit more traction. So that's really, really awesome and gives us loads of motivation to keep on making these things. So hopefully you liked it, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I will keep trying to churn these things out for you guys. Thanks very much and uh, see you in the next one.